Hey everyone, Draker here, and I'll be casting a one versus one today on Metalopolis. Now we are here with Idra as the Red Zerk um, on the uh, middle left spawn here in the uh, top middle uh, right spawn. Um, actually, top middle, I mean, you can see the right spawn, middle right here. Uh, we're here with Dorio uh, as the blue Protoss. And throughout this match, I'm probably just going to call him uh, Dorio just because saying Dorio, yeah, I don't feel like saying it. Um, so, yeah, we got a pretty nice matchup here. I had no clue who this Dorio guy is at all. Um, we have Idra over here already sending out his Overlord to scout the base next to him, which he will realize that his opponent is not there. Um, now we do have a pylon coming up here by the choke of uh, Dorio's base, um, which is uh, not unusual to get a pylon over there. I'm surprised he didn't move it over slightly enough so he could... Uh, cover this whole area unless he's going to use this corner as an opening. Not that it really matters, but um, now you have Idra is uh, just pumping out those drones. Um, uh, by the looks of things, I think he's going to get a quick expansion considering he doesn't have a spawning pool or even an uh, Vespian Gazer up yet. So yeah, we're probably going to see a quick expand out of Idra here, which is something he's uh, always... 90% of the time he does, um, unless he gets forced to one base. And no, he's not going to get the quick expansion first, as he is getting a late spawning pool. Um, at about 50, it was 15 supply when he got that, so it brings him down to 14 supply. Um, and this is one Zerg player who rarely gets his gas first, then spawning pool. Where you see a lot of pro Zerg players, they'll get the um, gas first. Uh, so by the time the spawning pool is done, they have enough gas to queue up metabolic boost right away, so you can get the speedlings in the field um, extremely quickly. Now, it looks like Idra is going to send out his drone scout now, as his overlords are not really getting much done. Um, he is also getting that uh, quick expansion. Expansion at his natural, as well as Dorio is getting his um, expansion as well. And look at this, he's going starting off with a forge first. Uh, not even getting a gateway on the field, he's going for a quick forge. So, um, won't be surprised if maybe he does like some type of proxy cannon rush here or something. Um, other than that, uh, he's just going to be placing down, looks like pylons over to place. Uh, not exactly sure. I haven't seen this type of build in a while as he just now gets his gateway as the forge finishes. So we actually might be seeing some quick tech by him as well. Um, Idra's um, natural is just about over halfway done now. We have scouts from Dorio is in the base of Idra. He's going to be able to scout around as well as Idra's uh, drone is in the base of Dorio. Um, won't be surprised if he goes and gas blocks uh, Dorio and Dorio is already going to start getting his gas now. It doesn't look like Idra is going to bother gas blocking him. Um, which some Zergs do. Uh, it's really more powerful against uh, Terran than any um, other race, uh, just because most Terran's builds, especially against the Zerg, are real gas heavy. Now we do have these uh, Zerglings are chasing around this probe. We'll be able to get a few kicks on him before he runs into this Photon Cannon, where um, Hydra has an Overlord there, so he sees exactly what's going on and won't bother losing those Zerglings just yet. Um, we do have a Gat Extractor now, did finish here for Hydra as he is getting gas. We do have a Roach Warren um, on the field, so we'll be seeing some roaches on the way. Um, well, we do have a Gateway is pumping out a Zealot on, um, as of right now, as well as a Cybernetic Score is on the way, so we're finally going to see some Stalkers on the field, uh, which I think he should have got first off, but he decided to get a Cannon down in case of any early rush here by Hydra. Um, but if anyone who plays Hydra should know, and he doesn't do any like six pull or any type of rush like that. He he likes teching up. Um, he likes doing his macros, and uh, usually he's he's always. I've never seen him do any early pushes. Usually uh, he'll push out with a handful of roaches, maybe some zer zerglings. But uh, he likes teching in those mutas. He loves the mutas, uh, which most zerg players should. I mean, he do mass zergling muta build is extremely strong, even in the late game. Um, some people think that tier 1 units aren't strong into late game, but with Zerglings, um, especially if you get the Speedlings in the field and get some upgrades, they are extremely powerful no matter what part of the match you are in. Now we do have more Photon Cans on the way here for Dorio, as well as a couple more uh, simulators so we can get some uh, gas. So he's definitely going to go to a gas heavy build um, as he's got all his gases built here. He has a wall off um, done at his main. And I don't even think the space is big enough to get a zealot by. Uh, so I think that could be a mistake on his part. Although he can warp in um, units in the back here. But anyways, now it looks like uh, Idra is planning to do some sort of push here with his uh, handful of roaches and zerglings. He's trying to get around these phonon cans and he's deciding to pick off this phonon can and if he can as he is microing um, back these uh, roaches trying to preserve them as much as he can. But 
Uh, we have more photon cannons going down here for Dorio, so I don't think this is a little fail uh, attack here on Aja's part, as he wasn't able to do much. He was able to kill that Zealot. He might be able to kill that Sentry, as a Sentry just put down some random force field, which isn't going to do much at all. And he was also um, being able to pick off that uh, photon cannon, um, so it was a good job there by him. Now we do have uh, a Hive on the way here. Uh, or is that a Lair? I don't even... Uh, lair, yeah. Uh, on the way here for um, Hydra. Uh, and he has nothing else really going on. Now we still have this attack going on here by Hydra. Um, it hasn't really even lost much as he just finally did kill that um, second Phonon Cannon and it forced Doriel to cancel uh, that other Phonon Cannon as we have more on the way. Now Hydra does have free reign on the mineral line here of Doriel's base, but there is a stalker on the field here, so uh, and those two probes also was able to fend off the rest of those roaches there by Hydra. Now we do have an evolution chamber on the way here for Hydra, um, as well as four gateways for Doriel. Um, I thought there was something else uh, that he was building, which he is not. He's just building phonon cans and gateways. So definitely a little uh, odd build here for this Protoss player. Now, Hydra is going to start getting his techs. He has Tier 1 ground armor on the way, so it looks like he is going to stick to uh, massive ground units at the moment. He is finally getting metabolic boosts on the way, as well as Glyoby Constituition, uh, as I always pronounce that wrong, I think. Anyways, now we do have Tier 1 ground armor on the way for Dorio, as well as a Robo base, so we are finally seeing some tech for both these players here, but it does look like Hydra is going to be um, slightly ahead here with his tech. And now I do have a proxy pylon coming over here by Doro um, on the top corner of this base here, most likely to keep an eye on this base in case Ida decides to do like a far expansion to um, have a hatchery and stuff close to his opponent's base here. Now Ida is looking to take over a third base, um, which is what Zerg players have to do. You always have to stay one base ahead of your opponent. It just helps quite a bit, um, especially with the whole uh, droning, losing when you build buildings, stuff like that. It's just, it's just better to have a one base ahead of your opponent. You don't have to. Uh, it's not something you always have to do, but it definitely helps. Now we have this great creep spreading, great use of these overlords here by Hydra. Now we do have Burrow on the way for Hydra as well, so maybe we'll see some infestors in the field. Sneak some infestors in the back here and uh, throw down some infested uh, Terrans and freaking uh, destroy everything. Or just throw out, use Narrow Parasite, which is kind of weak at the moment, or um, as everyone loves, uh, fungal growth on everything. So we got some stalkers warping in here for Doro. Now we do have Tunneling Claws on the way here for Ija for the roaches, so we can see some movable roaches on uh, that are burrowed on the field here. That's something you don't see much. Now we do have Twilight Council as well, some Immortals getting warped in here for uh, Doro. Looks like we had a little harass coming in here for some overlords by Hydra as he is using his overlords to scout around and does look like he might lose one of them, um, which really won't hurt him too bad as he's not supply blocked even with that one uh, lost overlord. We do have an overlord over there in this far base over here keeping an eye on when Doro might push out. Um, now we do have a huge push coming here uh, by Idra with a ton of roaches and it looks like one lonely zergling. So we got one uh, commander zergling here. It looks like he was uh, leading the pack, but he is now standing over by the um, Zell Naga Tower uh, to keep an eye on things, keep an eye on his opponents. Uh, now we do have Doro is looking to push out with a ton of units here. He's got a bunch of sentries, a uh, handful of zealots, and a ton of stalkers as well as immortals, and he's warping in some more stalkers in the top here, and it is forcing it looks like Idra is going to sit here burled in a wait. This is going to be a great play as there's no absorber on the field here, so Doro is not going to notice this. Doro is going to go up here, start attacking um, the base. Oh, I thought Idra was going to um, do a nice little flank here, but he decided to pull back to uh, his third base here. Now we do have tier 2 ground weapons are on the way here uh, for Doro. We also have a Hydralis Den on the field here for Hydra, and he's queued up 32 Zerglings. So that's going to be a ton of Zerglings. So he's definitely getting ready for this attack by Doro as uh, he's trying to pick off that Poxy Pylon, as he was able to do, which ki um, killed those three Stalkers that were getting warped in there by Doro. Doro's got his uh, Force Field shield up. Uh, I won't say Force Field. Uh, it's just called Guardian Shield up there um, for his uh, units here. And we have a nice little attack on his Stalkers versus the... Wow, that is some great placement there with, oh, he just needs one more um, force field there as he was able to separate that army by Hydra, and that is hurting Hydra. Hydra is in trouble right now um, as his whole army it just got demolished um, with great force field placement there by this Protoss player, but we do have a ton of those Zerglings are just about done now, and Hydra left the game. Wow, not even a good game or anything. So uh, this is a nice uh, matchup here. We've seen Hydra get beat by uh, an unknown uh, Protoss player, although some people might know who he is. I know I don't. I 
it's probably just some random rank. This was just a random public game, so it wasn't like a tournament match or anything. And we did have an observer finally get on the field here for Daryl. So there you have it. Definitely a great play by the Protoss player. Um, as I thought, he was going to be in trouble here um, with that push from Idra, but uh, I, um, Dora was able to warp in ton more units, forcing Idra to pull back before doing that uh, attack on his base, and he was able to overwhelm Idra there, especially with those force fields. He, if he didn't put those force fields down, he would have been in trouble. His army probably would have got wrecked by those roaches. Um, so there you have it. This game goes to D-Dorio, and I'll catch you all next time.